You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lines. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Maya Angelou was a renowned author, poet, and activist. Her gift of storytelling touched many hearts worldwide with famous works including the autobiographical I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings and her inspirational poems such as In Still I Rise. Her writings focused on themes of race, gender, and identity, and her powerful words continue to inspire millions around the world. And today, I'm going to be trying her writing routine. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new, I'm V, and I'm so excited for today's video because I have seen so many writers attempt famous authors' writing routines, and they just seem so fun and exciting. So I decided to finally try one of my own, and I decided to start with none other than Maya Angelou, who inspires me so much for many different reasons, besides being so well-spoken and having such a beautiful soul, and having some of the best quotes in existence that inspire me so 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 much in life and as a creative so i'm so excited to spend today doing maya angelo's famous daily routine so here's a breakdown of what she does for the day i've gathered material from different sources but basically she wakes up at 5 30 a.m and then would dress and have coffee at six we are in the coffee stage <laughs> and then she would make the commute to here's the most exciting part of her routine a hotel where she would spend the day so she would rent a hotel for the day by herself and she would spend hours there writing so she does 7 to 2 there or 7 to 12 30 if it's a bad writing day and then she would come home relax have a shower eat dinner and then she would read her work aloud to him and kind of edit before going to bed so the hotel i booked does 9 to 4 not 7 to 2 so i'm just shifting her routine down two hours and i honestly should probably get going because it's 8 55 and my rest is at 9 but before we go i wanted to finish getting dressed get ready every time i see maya angelo she's adorned in gold jewelry and she just looks so regal and elegant that's like the only way I can describe it so we're gonna be doing the same and that brings me to the sponsor of today's video which is Ana Luisa I have worked with them so many times before and that is because I truly love them and I truly love their jewelry so I thought I would give you guys a little quality update on the pieces that I've been loving and wearing starting with these earrings I literally wear them every day they're the Venus earrings they're just my stunning everyday pair of earrings I feel like everyone needs an everyday pair of jewelry and that is these for me and then don't mind my nails i'm trying to like grow them out so i'm keeping them natural and they look a little wonky but we've got my snake ring which i absolutely love this is my favorite of my rings that i've gotten from them My collection is expanding because they sent me four new pieces that are absolutely stunning. We have this gorgeous butterfly necklace, and then we have this gold heart necklace. I have this piece in silver from Ana Luisa, and I loved it so much that I had to get it in gold. And then I got these mini huggy hoops. And then last but not least, this bracelet, which is absolutely stunning. It has flowers all over it. If you want to treat yourself or someone you love with stunning new pieces from Ana Luisa, you can use the link in my description and my code VENUSWIMBURA20 for 20% percent off your order okay so I always see Maya wearing hoops so we're gonna we're gonna keep the hoops and then I think I'm gonna add these the little small huggies behind them and then I want to wear this bracelet it's so pretty so we're gonna add this and I wish you guys were here real time to tell me which of these necklaces to wear like what seems more Maya the butterfly necklace or the the heart locket kind of one okay you know what an argument could be made for both because she really pours her heart into her writing but I think I'm gonna go with the butterfly because one of my favorite quotes by her has a butterfly in it I don't remember it off the top of my head something like we admire the beauty of a butterfly but rarely admit the changes it's gone through to achieve that beauty pretty sure that's what it is and that really speaks to me in so many ways so butterfly it is so when you walk in through this door first is the mirror and then there's this cute sort of like living room space so we've got a little couch here a fireplace and then this is the desk with a tv above it that could be an issue <laughs> and then this is the view 
and then you come over here and i was so happy to see that there's a coffee maker i will be using that because i did not have enough coffee this morning so we'll in fact be using this <laughs> there's even a mini fridge i packed a lunch and snack because yeah i didn't really know what maya does for food so i figured i'd save money just pack my own and i'll put it in the fridge and then we've got the washroom it's that annoying kind of light that automatically turns on the fan so that's gonna be an annoying sound i'm sorry hope you can't hear that but this is the washroom nice nice and then here is the actual bedroom area so we've got the bed we've got another tv how nice and again, the view from here, which is nice. I read somewhere that Maya sometimes writes from bed, like she'll sit and write from here. So we're gonna have to do that at some point. Oh, this is so cute. We love. That's the tour. Okay, coffee is made. Mm hmm that's delicious. Maya knew what she was doing with a workplace that has free coffee. Mm hmm I say free, like this hotel wasn't freaking expensive just for literally seven hours. Anyway, now that I've given you guys a tour and I've gotten my coffee, we're gonna get right to work. I have my laptop here and I wanted to show you what Maya brings when she goes to hotels to work for the day. So she brings three things. I brought one of the three things. Mm. Yeah, so she brings a Bible, a deck of cards, and a bottle of sherry. I have like 10 decks of cards at my house, yet somehow forgot to bring even one. Yeah, I'm really sad about that because I could have played solitaire as a break. I don't know what she does with the cards, but I'm assuming it's that. So it's really sad. She also brings a bottle of sherry. I have no idea what sherry is. If I did a quick search, I'm guessing it's some type of liquor. I'm not driving home, so maybe I'll room service a drink, a little writing drink. But yeah, the third is a Bible. That's the only thing I brought. Again, I don't know what she did with the Bible. I'm assuming she didn't just bring to stare at it but i know she's very spiritual so i brought my bible i love this one it's a battlefield of the mind bible it's amplified so i brought this with me and if i want to break maybe i can continue on with my reading i'm trying to read it from front to end and i finished genesis and i'm a little bit into exodus so i'm very much at the beginning so i brought that and i'm dying to get into my writing right now because i've been missing my stories and characters so much i've been reading a lot lately and i just finished red white and royal blue i should have a vlog on that up if you want to watch my reading vlog and my reaction to watching the movie that came out but that especially inspired me to write because it's very similar to what my story is about little spiel for those of you who may not know i am aspiring a romance author i'm currently working on my second work in progress which i refer to as project itl which is an abbreviation for into the limelight and i'm still working on the blurb but essentially it's like a fake dating story set in la between a songwriter who's my main character and a musician and the major theme is authenticity in the face of public or well being under the public eye. I like never know how to explain my stories honestly, but let's get started. Okay, I've got my Scrivener pulled open. I'm on chapter 12 and I'm 34,457 words into this draft. So if it's going to be about 70,000 words, which is like my prediction, I don't really know how long it's going to actually be, then we're almost halfway or basically halfway. I don't really have a goal for the day. I'm just going to write and see how much I have written by the end of the day. One of Maya's most famous quotes is, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. This one really speaks to me and probably a lot of you as well because each silenced tale, each story that doesn't get out is a missed opportunity to connect to heal, to inspire, because when we share our stories, we find solace, understanding, liberation. There's a sort of freedom from telling a story and letting it unfold. So if you need a sign to write that story that's breathing inside of you, maybe you too can find inspiration from Maya's words to share those stories. Okay, I'm gonna take a little reading break, but writing has been going very well. I saw something that says that Maya edits while she writes, so while I feel like I've done a lot, my word count won't really show for it right now because I've been doing a lot of editing, like writing and then going back and editing it. I know that she does edit out loud later in the day, but I'm also going to be editing as I go while I write, which is not what I'm, which is what I'm trying not to do during this draft or what I've been trying not to do since it's a very early draft, but in my fashion, I've been editing as I'm going today, so... Yeah, but the writing's been going well. I am finding myself getting distracted, like mentally just like thinking about other stuff. So I'm gonna take a little reading break and then get back to my writing. 
and this is what I'm reading. This is I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. This is her autobiography and one of her best-selling books. And I've read so many of her poems, but I have yet to read a book of hers. So I've been loving reading this and it's, her prose is so beautiful. Like it's, you know those books where you like, you annotate those lines that hit? This would be the type of book where like half the page is covered in underlines and scribbles and stuff because it's just, everything is so well written. So many lines pack a punch. I heard that this isn't the happiest of stories because she's been through some traumatic stuff in her life. So not expecting this to be a lighthearted read by any means but I'm excited to get to know more about her and how she came to be so yes I'm gonna read this for a bit and I also have the audiobook on audible and oh my goodness you guys she narrates her audiobook and her voice if you have not yet heard Maya Angelou's voice please go look up an interview with her like I don't know there's something so hypnotic about her voice I just love listening to it so the fact that the audiobook is narrated by her is like perfection so I'm gonna listen to it and read this for a little bit and then get back to writing Another quote of hers that inspires me so, so much, especially in my writing and creativity, is I believe that the most important single thing beyond discipline and creativity is daring to dare. I personally believe that this fearless mindset is so important to push us beyond the limits that we think we have and to unleash our full potential. Oddly enough, I'm getting more work done here at the bed than I was at the desk. Like I've been locked in a rhythm and I just finished chapter 12. I'm trying to make my chapters short but still end at a natural break because I've been reading a lot lately like I said and I've noticed that my reading pace is so much better when I'm reading a book with shorter chapters and I've been trying to, I was okay, I was listening to a podcast episode from Livy who has a podcast Chronicles and Coffee and I love it so much and I was listening to one of her solo episodes. I don't remember the exact episode number and it was a while ago so I don't remember exactly Exactly what she said but she said something about having a reading journal but for writing or maybe it was for both like reading and writing and essentially what she does is she'll read a book and then afterwards she'll write why she loved it or what she loved about it and how she could apply that to her writing something like that but I thought that was just such an incredible idea because if you're reading within the same genre and you're and you love a book like say for example you're a mystery writer and you're reading a mystery you should take note of what <laughs> made it a five-star read for you and then aim to do the same with your writing because I feel like you should write what you love to read so if it was the fact that it was short chapters if it was the banter you loved how good the banter was if it was a more simple straight to the point style of writing or maybe you're someone who likes prettier prose like just to take note of what what made it stand out to you and what made you love it and then take note of it so you could apply it to your own writing I think that's so smart and I've been reading a lot of romance lately so I've been mentally doing that I think I kind of have always been kind of mentally doing that but I'm trying to be more aware of it so so I also do it for books that I don't like and why I don't like them. Like if I'm like, oh my gosh, this is taking way too long to get to the good part. I don't want to do that. <laughs> or if I felt like the character wasn't relatable at all, which that one can be trickier because some people can relate to characters and some might not. But you know, it's just an example. Just trying to emulate what you like in a novel without copying, obviously. So yeah, just wanted to share. Apparently the fireplace turns on. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty coming out of that. Cozy though. It's with great sadness that I announced that it's time for my departure. That went by oddly slow and fast at the same time. Hey guys, a future V, as probably evidenced by the hair change, popping in to say that after I came home, I followed the rest of my routine and relaxed for the rest of the night and then went back and edited what I wrote, although I didn't read it aloud to anyone because I'm not at that stage where I'm reading my stuff to anyone yet. But I did go back through it and edit it, which I thought was actually really nice because like I said before, I haven't really been editing in this draft. I've just been kind of writing and trying not to look back, but it was kind of nice to look back at what I wrote, not gonna lie, because it kind of helped me prepare forward instead of getting stuck in a rut. So yes, I just wanted to tell you a few of the finishing thoughts, my final thoughts on trying Maya's writing routine for the day. First off, overall, did I enjoy it? Absolutely. As someone who enjoys alone time, I thought that this routine was actually so nice to just go to a hotel and then just be locked up there by yourself for seven hours to do work. While I did get distracted a few times just because the hotel has Wi-Fi and it's 
like I associate hotels with relaxation so sometimes I was like oh I just want to watch a video when I did and stuff like that I actually did get a good amount of writing in because besides that there's not much else to do and you have so many hours and you want to make use of the time you got for the money you paid so really good writing session I finished two chapters and right now I'm at like 37k in my novel after like edits and stuff so very happy with how many with, with the progress that I made but just just a little thought if you're someone who is a napper you might get tempted by having a bed literally in the same room that you work I don't like naps so that was like not an issue for me but I really wish I could have tried this challenge for more than one day just to get a really good feel of it but that ho like hotels are expensive to rent for the day I don't know how Maya did it every single day I mean I'm sure it was way less expensive at the time that she was doing it but still I'm so curious about how much it costs to do that every day because I would not be able to do that right now as much as I actually really enjoy doing that so what would I keep from Maya's routine I would keep the waking up early um mind you I shifted her time down so I didn't wake up as early as she does but I found that the time I woke up was pretty good it was still early and it just made you feel more productive as the, the, the hours went by and the more you had done two I would definitely I would so actually love to do the writing in a hotel if it was financially a good option then I would so love to do that because it was really really nice but I guess there are ways to imitate that by you know kind of allotting a time to set aside to just focus on your work so make sure you have all your other tasks done and, and then you can just use that time to write it's not the same as a hotel but you make do with what you got oh also the editing like I said I actually really liked going back and editing what I worked on and it helped me push forward because I knew that I was gonna be going back to change it like it's such a struggle to choose between do I edit or do I not for a first draft I'm like I'm just gonna go forward all I have to do is get it out but when it comes to the second draft it's like I don't want to be editing too much because I'm gonna be doing big edit changes anyway so it'd be really redundant if I did a lot of small edits for big things that are gonna be changing but at the same time sometimes it can put me in, in writing blocks if I'm stuck at a part because I don't think it's good enough or I like can't get past a certain thing so sometimes it is helpful for me to edit in those senses so I actually really enjoyed looking back at what I wrote and editing it and then sometimes seeing oh my god okay I thought it was it's way better than I thought it was because sometimes when you're initially writing it you're taking so long to write that you think it's bad but then you read it back I actually see what I was doing so yes that was nice if I ever try this challenge again maybe I will try reading aloud to someone and seeing if that enhances my editing process in any way because then you're getting feedback from someone else we'll see we'll see baby steps but yes overall I really enjoyed this challenge and I want to try other auth authors writing routines so comment down below whose routine you want to see me try and let me know if you would try Maya's routine I'm so curious and with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did please give it a thumbs up please consider subscribing if you want to see more videos from me and don't forget to turn on the post notification bell so you're notified the next time I upload and I will see you guys in my next video bye